But he talks about last week, he talks about you as a problem in the conflict. This week we'll talk about them. We're not gossiping or anything, but we're talking about them. <laughs> um, we want to, um, in particular, talk about looking past the person in the conflict and seeing the person in the conflict. Okay. <coughs> um, what actually, that we want to develop the ability to look past the conflict and look at the other person and work out what do we actually want for them. What's our objective in relation to that other person in the conflict? Um, the important thing there is, have you actually seen the other person? Do you actually know who they are, what they stand for, where they're at? And the other thing we're going to briefly mention is, are you living by the golden rule? What's the golden rule? Please and thank you. And it's not please and thank you. It's what? Yes, it does. What is it? Love, Love your neighbour as yourself. Or maybe it's do to others as it happens to you. I think that's the official golden rule. Okay. And peers, quickly, ask these three questions to each other. <coughs> and there's three more clicks to go. No. Okay, the first question. Get in pairs. Everyone get in pairs. Okay. Can we own three so we don't have to move? I've just got here. No. Thanks. You need to Because <laughs> if there'll be two threes, well, we can all be in twos. That'd be better. First question. What does the other person enjoy most? Second question. A memorable moment. Third question. What do they value? Okay, ask the three questions, then give me a list of all the things you believe about the other person. <laughs> Let's go for it. I just have an answer for each question. Um, Sharon, what does Sarah enjoy most? Outdoors. Outdoors. Sarah, what a memorable moment from Sharon? Uh, wedding day. Wedding day, of course. Oh. Jason, what does Sean value? Oh, <laughs> <Better. Stop. laughs> Relationships and honesty. Relationships and honesty, okay. Now, um, I want you to tell me something about the other person that's not an answer to the question that you've learned from this conversation. Huh? Oh, okay. okay. Like something you know about the person <laughs> that they didn't actually say, but now you can tell about the yeah, person. Like, right. From this? From the information they've given you, you now know more than the actual words they said. For example, <laughs> Sean's memorable moment was learning to shoot a gun. Right? Oh. That tells me he's an adventurous type of person. Right? There's a, there's something okay, it tells me he's like, likes exciting adventures. <laughs> so I'm thinking something, it could be that or yeah, there might be some other so cool. <laughs> But I'm going to pick that as a, right, okay, so read between the lines and come up with something about the other person. Okay, write it down. And see if you're right, how about that? So, how did we go, something, have you come up with something? Yeah. Tell me, do you want to tell me something? Is there anything with Sharon? Jason's a romantic. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, it's true. That's what good. does he love doing most? Being with the people he loves. What does he value the most? Relationships. Yes, okay. Does that <laughs> okay. tell you that he's a romantic? Or yeah, so you're reading, you're reading a few extra lines here. <laughs> okay. Um, might see, value relationships. Might be relationships in general. That's right. Yeah. Okay, what have we got? Something read between the lines. What do we find out about that person? Okay. Um, she likes to have a lot of reflection time because she likes a lot of reflection time. She likes to reflect, <laughs> thinks a lot. Um, but she also has her priorities in order because she actually put God first. Priorities in order? Yeah. She said God's so, in order. Yeah. Wow, so very that, good. That goes to show that. But it also shows... Oh, do I keep going? I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, that's it. Come out the turn. Sorry. I'm a novel. People really don't talk about It's not 500 words. So. <laughs> I need to add them in somewhere. Okay, we're talking about them. The first things we need to remember about them, remember them as the people that we're fighting with in our conflict? Their feelings. First, they do have feelings. The first thing is that, what does that mean? They're in the image of God. They are this God is Christ, we're Christians, right? Remember? So when we come to a conflict, we remember that the person is actually God's creation, God's representative on the earth. Wait, what's, how do you say that? That's Latin. Image, Deo means deity, from deity, so it's the image of God. That's Latin. I M A M A G. What do you want? Image, image of God. So the person is actually, when we're dealing with this person, we're actually dealing with God's representative to some extent. So that um, gives us a perspective on what we're doing, rather than just bashing them. Okay. The golden rule, of course. If we're Christians, when we're in a conflict, we, as well as trying to win our conflict, whatever the conflict's about, actually more more important, but pervasive should be 
actually swapping sides, yeah. working out where they're at, and then now that now what now this can be frustrating, okay, but I, I know I private stories, but this as I I have a I guess I'm practiced in this and it can drive Kristen crazy. Because she'll come to me with some problem or issue or something, and straight away I'm thinking other side of the story, getting the other person's point of view, figuring out where they're really at. And that translates sometimes as you're taking their side instead of mine. But all I'm doing is analysing out loud. But um, it, yeah, it's it's a, a very important skill. If you want to be a Christian and um, conflict management, figure out who was the other person, where they're at, understanding their side is a really um, important thing. And then you figure out, okay, if I was them, this is what I'd want. Now, then the next question, am I actually in a position I can actually do what is best for them or what they actually want? Sometimes, of course, what is best for them might not be what they want. So we have to be careful. Um, sometimes what they want, you know, the kids want KFC every night. Or doing um, so, there's actually a. If you look at Golden Rule on um, YouTube, okay, there's a lot of discussion that the Golden Rule is out of date and has been superseded by the Platinum Rule and all this stuff. Basically, meaning that the Golden Rule assumes that you and me are the same. So if I do to you what I want you to do to me, if I like going fishing, then I should take you fishing. Because that's what I would want you to do to me. Now if you hate fishing, that's not going to work. Right? If you um, if you want to go skydiving and scared, so I've got to get inside of you and do expand it to what you want, what I would want you to do to me, I would want you to do for me the things that I like, or the things that are best for me. So therefore I've got to get in your head and find out what's best for you, and then do that. That's the... Um, fine fruit behind the golden rule and that's what some of these other people that are talking about the golden rule are trying to say that it's not just because I like fishing I'll take you fishing that's a simplified analysis it's really what's best for me what's best for that person I've got to get, find out what's best for them and that should be my goal but the, um, the five love languages just because yes just very nice. similar get in their head find out how they operate <laughs> and then let that influence how you either how you navigate the conflict <coughs> or actually some of the conflict can become less important and actually what this person really needs might be that actually <coughs> I just didn't have what they want now because they don't really need another fight. Or maybe it means actually what they, they don't even know what they need so helping them find out what they're really at. Something along those lines. Yeah. Rather than winning the fight um, actually working through with the person what they really need. Um, the golden rule is bird. That means doing nothing doesn't fly. Well, occasionally it might apply if the very best thing for that person is for you to ignore them, but um, <coughs> an active, we're expecting an active response. Um, and the Golden Rule simplifies a whole lot of complex situations and all of have so many different principles to apply. This is like a foundational principle that can help clarify the things. Culture and gender, just we need to be aware of that, that the person we're fighting with might actually see things completely differently, have a completely different understanding of what's appropriate, etc. Um, in particular, some cultures are very individualistic, like Australia. A lot of other cultures, including a lot of the people that are here that aren't native Australian, are very collective. So if I'm talking to John, actually what he's saying is what John's uncles and aunties and family all would agree on. And I can't convince John to change his mind unless he gets their approval. Mm. So that's a totally different scenario. I have to be aware of, even if he agrees with me and wants to do what I say, or wants to like not have a fight with me unless the family agree and can be convinced there's no chance of him backing down on the argument or whatever it is. So that's an interesting thing you have to be aware of um, depending on where the person's coming from and what their background is, things like that. Okay. Now we would, I want us to think about our case study and think about the other person, what would the golden rule have meant for the other person in your conflict? And, yeah. So, you can decide whether you did that or not, but just how, if the golden rule was applying in your conflict, what would that have meant? Blank face? You can share? I'll just let you think for a minute and then we can share. Okay. Jason wants to share. Yeah. Golden rule. In your conflict, what would that have meant? 
Um, do to others. I'm going to say, do to others what's best for them. Uh, do to others as you would have them treat you. Which means, give them what's best for them. Or, what well, God wants them at this point. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, tricky. Okay. Yes. Okay, so my my problem was that my old workplace, I'm not going to say it's ending, um, workplace was um, selling the business because they could no longer afford to run the business. Yep. So the new owners coming in and I wasn't sure about the new owners. Yes. Um, so they were doing it <coughs> for them because they could no longer afford it. Yeah. So that was what they needed to do for yep. them, but I wasn't thinking of them, I guess. You just didn't want you were thinking about your job. And new owners. Yeah. 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 And so, yeah. so you were hostile to the sale? Yeah. Uh -huh. So I just wasn't sure about the new owners and how they would know how to run yep. the business. So I was and so thinking, I was yeah, now that I didn't really care. You didn't really care. Applying golden rule would have meant yeah. you would have understood the situation and yeah. supported them because it was best for their personal mm. financial situation. And I was like, yes. Yeah. So what if the other person believes, if the other person was lying, but they believe the lie, but you... See, that's complicated, isn't it? Mm. The other person is self-deceived mm. and they think something mm. um, and they're wrong. But that's, what do they want? They want you to agree with them. What does God want for them? What's the best thing for them? Somehow you've got to help them out of there at some now sometime, and that's complicated. Sometimes you've got to make a call because some if, is it the wise thing to smash their bubble, and that could be quite distressing. And you might need to gradually work something out. Because um, sometimes you have to. Sometimes it's better patiently one step at a time. Because if you're trying to completely smash their bubble, they won't at all accept what you're saying, and it'll just complete destruction of the relationship. I've been in situations where people have been in that. They've been like acting <coughs> in a certain way. I'm like, you're totally reading life wrong. You're totally getting it. So, but if I was to actually point out all the things you've got wrong, how to totally destroy your whole world, that's not a really good idea. So in that case, we sort of navigated around and dodged a lot and one of the just tiny little things one at a time, like prevented major catastrophe. Um, and also it was a slow ongoing process. Because it's all, uh, there are some complicated times. What makes it more? One conflict I'm thinking of, the problem is if it's not a two-person conflict. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. What if they're hurting somebody else? If there's a third party involved, what do you do? Because what they want is for you to let them continue on in their negative, destructive, beha harmful behaviour. Mm. And in that case, if, when it's three, no, in fact, my situation, third party required, I'm not, you're not getting at all what you want. Because the... Um, my responsibility to maintain and protect the third party mm. means that other people totally didn't get what they want and they hate me forever. Um, but that's too bad. Um, in that case, because I was protecting the, the injured party. And <coughs> so I was looking at one person was obviously doing exactly what was good for them at my personal cost. But yes. What, what would be the, I guess, the, the right thing to do if someone was, the conflict was, um, an offence from somewhere else and they were putting it on to you. What was the correct So way to I that? was really offended at my last church by the youth leaders, okay? So I assume that Matt is ignorant and is stealing money because that's what my last youth leaders did. And so I never talked to Matt and I won't serve and help in his ministry or anything like that. Is that the sort of thing you're saying? No, it's not like it's not like you were offended from something. It was more they were carrying some, I guess, anger yeah. and burden and taking it out. Okay, so I've got anger issues in general. And you took it out on and someone so else who didn't necessarily do anything So else. Some, yeah, someone walks in on the wrong day and so they wear it and you I yell. You made them the third party without knowing. Yeah. yeah. yeah what, so do you, what, what do you do? What would the right, yeah, I guess, how would you react to that? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? You can't even go to the grocery store. You apologise for that. But I guess it would have liked to. How much detail do you know about the other person's problem? <coughs> do, you, do you just think they're carrying anger because they're so grumpy and for no reason they must have an anger issue? Well, it was, it was quite. Quite. Well, what I guess. So, but do you, yeah. Like, comments on the floor? What do you think? Um, I was just thinking, like, before he even finished speaking, because I was thinking something of his mental. Um, <laughs> I forgot my train of thought. Oh, yeah. You can actually, in a positive way, 
in a strong way, turn around to that person and say, no, you're directing it at the wrong person. I am not that person. Because you need to do as to others as you want to be treated. Be respectful, but you've got to be strong in your stance. You be polite. And you tell them straight, take it. I, I would say something. <laughs> the camera's on. <laughs> do you want me just to pause it quickly? Like, that's what we should do. But the thing is, is that some people just don't even think. And sometimes you literally just have to turn around yeah. and just put your hand up and yeah. say, stop. Yeah. You're directing this at the wrong person. I am not the one that did this to you. Mm. You need to have a think about what you're saying to me because you're taking it out of me. And, and you have to, sometimes you have to go down that road, yeah. even if you yes. alienate them because they are in the wrong. Yeah. And it's not fair for them to be doing that. But you've got to do it in a respectful manner, the way Jesus would. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> so, I'm sure he gave it to someone in the Bible somewhere. <laughs> he did, didn't he? Yeah. He, so know. Heidi's comment was, sometimes you've got to confront the person and say, you're taking out a whole lot of anger on me that's totally not deserved, <laughs> and actually bring their attention to the fact that they are leaving this trail of carnage and destruction, and point them back to figuring out what is the issue that you're carrying. You actually have to deal with something because you're hurting a lot of people. Yeah. And pray about it too. <laughs> and, and so sometimes, yes, sometimes you have to just stop holding a minute and bring your attention to the fact that you need to, what you're doing is actually not yeah. okay. It's actually like... How many people have had that done to them? Oh, yes, no one yes, yes, I have it done to me. Okay. Um, yeah? Well, like blamed for someone else. No, no, someone's actually said to you, excuse me, oh. you're out of order, what your, your behaviour is not actually appropriate. <laughs> I'm assuming that you're carrying some sort of issue and I've just stepped on the hot button of yours for no reason. And now you're yelling at me for what? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's people, people, it's people, usually husband wife stuff. Right? Husband and wife stuff. Yes. You know, it's very, you'll see that in the, the, um, the guy that's polite and respectful at work all day long, deals with all the stress, and he's perfectly polite, comes home and yells at everything that moves as soon as he gets home because he's all stressed from the day at work, right? Or you trigger um, something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's totally normal. It works the other way around. <laughs> or, that's often what, rather than a little stress at work and at home and so then you work with it. Or the kids cop it as well. The kids cop it because oh, I can't yell at the people at work yeah. so I'll lose my job, so I'll kick the dog when I get home. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think oh. so. One time. <laughs> that's where the head starts. So some, what head. would be an alternative to the direct, hold on, stop it right there, that's bad behaviour. Any alternative responses to that situation? Yeah. You could yell back. Yeah. You could yeah, do the total opposite and be really, really apologetic to them, even though you're not accepting yeah. responsibility. Yeah. I am really sorry this has happened to you. I'm sorry that you feel this way. You know, you, and you take it in the complete opposite direction and you give them a load of affection and, and not and make them feel guilty. <laughs> And why are you doing that? So Heidi is saying, for those that can't hear, she is saying, do the big opposite, be very humble, be very meek, be very apologetic, even though you haven't done anything wrong. Yeah, but you're not I, I find the that situation. If you... You're giving them some, what's that thing? Fuel to the fire. <laughs> no, not fuel to the fire. Um, being sympathetic to their situation. You're being, you're, first thing you're doing is you're holding a bridge to the person yeah. before you try and communicate with them. Yeah. I just say take it head on. That's right, because right. sometimes the person won't at all receive that stop. And as you say, it'll be fuel in the fire and it'll be off. Mm. And the Bible does say a quiet answer turns away wrath. Mm. So sometimes you can be meek and humble, and over time you build the opportunity and you can maybe come back to the person the next day and say, Excuse me, yesterday you fully blew up at me yeah, because I was parked in the car park across from the door, and that's, that hasn't got a sign up that says your car park, and, and I didn't know. Well. And then you're pointing out to them in a time when there's no conflict and no confrontation, they're calm, maybe they'll receive it better. Um, yeah, very good. Mm.